Hey guys, it's Dale here from Elephant Memories. Today we're going to be color filling some laser engraved and CNC carved wood projects with mica and pigment powders. This is an upgrade from my acrylic paint color fill video I did four years ago. Adding these color powders to your projects will really add extra pop that you're looking for. These pigments have amazing luminous properties from incredible shine to color changing hues, shimmering metallics, and even glow in the dark, making the possibilities for your project endless and unique. For this video, I'll be doing two finishing techniques. First, we'll cover the project in a clear resin. This is for indoor use. Next, we'll be using a rugged gloss varnish. This is more suited for outdoor use. I'll include links in the description below for the projects that I've used in this video. If you use the links, you'll automatically get a discount on your orders and it'll help me out to make more videos like this. I'll also include a link to my free newsletter. Here you'll gain access to all of my tutorials as well as some exclusive content on things like resin projects that you can do right at home and more. So let's get started, shall we? For this color filling technique, you will need the following. Finished project wood. I used a nice three quarter inch hard maple. Quick drying wood sealer like shellac. I used the pre-mix aerosol spray can for quick application. Epoxy resin or a good quality outdoor rated varnish. I used a clear tabletop epoxy for the first project and a rugged amber gloss varnish for the second, both from Total Boat. A quality mica or pigment powder like eye candy pigments. Wax paper. Small thin head paintbrush. Protective work gloves or nitrile gloves butane torch to pop bubbles if you're resining, and a foam brush to spread the varnish. Plastic masking film like Aura Mask for CNC carving. 12 inch masking tape for laser engraving. Choosing the right pigment powders can be tricky. There are just so many choices with different effects, like hues and color changing. Some are straight up solid color, like Okinawa blue or Sartreuse. This rusty red has a lot of dark undertones. Prussian purple is a really nice dark blue with purple undertones. But this blue blood is one of my favorites. You can't tell by looking at the straight powder, but the hues and tones once added into resin is absolutely stunning. Some powders have tons of sparkle and shine. Yet others like this RYU Dragon Ultra Shift has tons of hues with greens and golds. My advice is to go to the product website of your pigment of choice and read the descriptions, look at the photos, and see if they have videos, and this will help narrow down your choice. The results are really quite stunning. This is a close-up of the CNC V-Groove that was brushed with blue powder, then finished with a clear epoxy resin. Here is another example. This is a walnut charcuterie board finished with the food contact safe epoxy on one side 
and left natural on the back for cutting. On the left is maple finished with an outdoor rated varnish. The right is finished with epoxy. The top font is carved with a CNC machine where the bottom logo was laser engraved. To start, prep your wood by planing it flat, then sanding it to a smooth finish. For CNC milling, you want to mask the project. A plastic sheet film works well for this. This will prevent the powder from adhering to your entire project. Cut the film to size, then peel off the back and place on your wood. We used a plastic spreader to push down on the wood and remove any trapped air bubbles. We are using an Amana carbide tipped V-groove router bit from Tools Today to carve the text on the top. Now I'm masking off the bottom with a 12 inch masking tape for lasers. Do not use plastic sheeting film for the lasers. If it contains PVC or vinyl, it can ruin your laser or void any warranty you may have. Even if it's safe for the laser, it will just burn and then the plastic sheeting will peel. Instead, just use regular paper masking tape. Be sure to press down and smooth out any trapped air. We are laser engraving our logo on the bottom. On my Epilogue Mini 50 watt laser, I did two passes with the following settings. A DPI of 400, a speed of 40, a power of 100, and Stucky dithering. I tape some wax paper over some of the area just so the powder doesn't stick everywhere. Spray or brush on a liberal amount of shellac. I like using shellac because it's quick drying and seals the wood pores at the same time. While the shellac is wet, remove the wax paper. Now sprinkle the pigment on top of the carving. I will put the powder measured out in a cap so not to accidentally pour the whole bottle on it. Just saying. Use the brush to fill the carving and spread around. If there are areas the powder is not sticking to, you can repeat this process after about 15 or 20 minutes. Reapply the shellac and the powder. Now do the same process for the engraving. Do not put used pigment back in its original container, but you can save it and put it aside in case you need to reapply. Now leave this for about 15 or 20 minutes for the shellac to fully dry. Flip the board over on the wax paper and gently give it a bang to release any extra pigment. Once you are satisfied, give another spray of shellac to really seal the pigment. Let dry again for 15 minutes. After the shellac is dry, you can now peel off the mask. You may need to use tweezers or a pick to help get some of the smaller pieces up. 
Don't worry if some of the powder is stuck on some of the non-engraved areas. I like to let the shellac thoroughly dry overnight before sanding. The last thing you want is for a few wet pockets of shellac to get dust stuck to. Now sand nice and clean. Oh my goodness, this looks so good. Okay, for the piece that I'm adding resin, I'm going to cover the whole wood in shellac. This will seal the grains and help prevent air from escaping the wood and into your resin while it's curing. Let dry for 20 minutes. Mix your clear resin and pour over the entire surface. The color is really popping already. Spread the resin evenly. That shellac sealed the power well. I don't see any of it in the resin. Pop the bubbles with a butane torch. Then remove any dust and cover for 24 hours. For the second one, we are applying a thin coat of an amber gloss varnish. We'll add to the V-groove to seal it well too. Then go back using a clean foam brush to remove any varnish that's built up and settled in the carving. You can reapply after one hour. Oh, I really like this honey color. And that's it. Here are the results. They both came out great. As you can see, it works well for both CNC as well as laser engraved projects. If you found this helpful, please consider subscribing to our channel and give us a thumbs up. Leave questions in the comments below. And I'd love to see what you've created with this technique, so be sure to tag us on Facebook and Instagram at One Elephant Memories. We'll see you next time.